as with all these things, I saw a video on YouTube of something similar and decided I'd like to do it myself, just for just to see if I could do it. I'm Alex, I'm a PhD student in computer science here at Nottingham, and we're looking at my musical floppy drives. About 18 months ago, I came across a video on YouTube of something similar. Some guy had taken a load of floppy drives and made them play music, and I thought, I could do that. In each of the floppy drives, there's a stepper motor, which drives the, the read-write heads up and down. So in the three and a half inch floppy drives, these ones, the stepper motor is these little round things here, and that rotates and it moves the read-write head in and out. Each of these stepper motors, the small ones here, and on the five and a quarter inch drive, it's, well, there we go. It's a very big motor. The disc for the three and a half inch floppy disks is divided into 80 tracks radially from the centre and on the five and a quarter inch disc originally there I think they had 40 tracks there are high density ones that can have 80 tracks so in fact this drive has got a switch on the front so you can switch between 40 tracks or 80 tracks the read write head can move up one step at a time up to 80 steps what we're doing is pulsing the motor. You pulse it at the rate of the note you want to play. So um, every musical note has a certain frequency. So you just pulse the, the motor at that frequency. When you had a floppy disk in your computer, you'd hear it making noises. Um, you get a similar effect with inkjet printers as they go up and down. In this case, we're explicitly controlling the speed at which it's running. So normally it doesn't really matter as long as it does the right amount of steps and it does everything in the right order. Um, in this case, we want it to go exactly at the right frequency so it makes exactly the right note. On an IDE hard drive like this, it looks fairly similar to a floppy drive connector. There's a few more pins, I guess. But on this, the controller is on the hard disk itself, so it's somewhere on one of these chips. Now, what that means is, when this is plugged into a motherboard, the motherboard just says, read me this bit of data from, the, from this position. And the hard drive will know how to do that. It goes off and spins to the right place and sends you the data back. On a floppy drive like this, the controller is on the motherboard, so there's nothing very clever on the floppy drive. And what that means is, it's a lot easier for us to tell the floppy drive what to do in terms of making the motor move directly. On each of these floppy drives you will see there are uh, two connectors going in. There's the power connector which is this, these ones, so that's just to power the drive. The other cable you'll see is a ribbon connector. The cables coming out of these ribbon cables, see there's two blacks, a green and a blue. The blacks are just ground. The green and the blue, one is step and one is direction, okay? So if the direction pin uh, is held low, it will move in one direction, and when it's held high, so probably at five volts, it will move in the other direction. And the step pin, whenever you pulse that, it will move one step in the direction of the direction pin. All these cables, they plug into this Arduino here. An Arduino is, it's almost like a small computer on a board. It's not quite that, but it's a small programmable board. It's got all sorts of input and output pins. A lot of hobbyists use it in little projects to make robots work, or there's a whole community of people out there that use Arduinos to do things. The Arduino has got a little program running on it, which is talked to by another program on the computer down this USB cable. So on my computer, uh, it's a Java program, and that sends messages down the USB to the Arduino. It sends one message per drive and it tells it when to start a drive going and at what frequency to make it run and when to stop it. There'll be thousands of messages being sent down the USB cable per second. Each of the floppy drives, the read-write head, can only be in one of 80 places. Okay, and the Java program doesn't really know that, so it doesn't know when to flip the direction pin. What the Arduino does, that keeps track of the position of the drive. So you just tell it to make this drive run at this frequency and the Arduino will know exactly which position each drive head's in and know when to reverse it. If you didn't do that, it would get to the end and it would just go um, You know, it would just sort of jam up against the end, I guess. The Arduino has, it's kind of abstracted away the complexity of the floppy drive. So the program on the computer doesn't need to know anything about the floppy drives. It just says, play this note for this long. The software itself reads MIDI files. It's literally just a sequence of notes. And a MIDI can have lots of different channels. Each separate channel can have a separate instrument so, you know, track zero could be a piano, track one could be a trumpet, something like that. Unfortunately, with the floppy drives, they all sound the same and we can't really do anything about that. In a MIDI file, you can control the volume of each note as well. Whereas, again, the floppy drives, you can't really do that. They play at one volume. I didn't write this code. Um, the guy who uploaded the original video I saw um, had uploaded some code, um, both the Arduino 
and, um, and to run the computer in Java. So I, I've edited bits of it. Rather than having to edit the MIDI files, I can just drag some sliders around. This is the program here. So I can load Flight the Bumblebee. This is the bit I added. One of the drives is particularly loud. What this allows us to do is to change drive two to play channel uh, one, say if he wants to. Now I think Flight of the Bumblebee uses channel one and two predominantly. So I'll just swap these around a bit. Okay, and also what we've got here, um, we've got two sliders. This one lets us transpose the notes. So that means to put them up or down in pitch. If you like, I can fiddle with it while it's playing and you'll be able to hear it. I put the slider down to the bottom, so it's playing five octaves lower than it should be. So, well, the first thing I notice is the drives are moving very slowly and making a very, well, not very nice noise. So the drives aren't very good at playing low notes. We, we found that out, I guess. So I can put it back up a few octaves. The drives start moving faster. And if I put it up even further, I think this is the point where we start to break the stepper motors. And now I've, I seem to have done something horrible to it. <laughs> Oh no, it's finished, right, okay. So, um, yeah, sometimes it does that. Right, I'll just pull the power out. <laughs> there we go. Hopefully that'll reset itself now. There certainly are some limitations. The original program would only play a certain subset of notes, but I decided, why not put them all in? Um, I think we've discovered why, why not now. <laughs> Well, it's supposed to have stopped, but um, something's got lost somewhere. Oh well. <laughs> there we go, fixed. <laughs>